Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisperer 88. Um, on your screen you will see a piece by the artist Ashil Gorky. Uh, this is called Landscape Table and was done in 1943. And I uh, am a great admirer of, of Mr. Gorky and his work. I'm going to reinterpret this piece on my gel plate and uh, I will take some inspiration from his use of colors, a uh, very specific palette of colors, um, yellows and black and some gray and some touches of red and green. So uh, as a first step, I'm going to apply some uh, of my scribbles to give some kind of uh, structure. Uh, I'll do some lines first. Some r random lines. And then some of my That's it for the fat marker. Then I'll do some more scribbles with my Sharpie pen. Okay, so that's kind of the framework. Now, um, I have these, um, these are leftover shelf liners that uh, I had a project where I had to line a whole bunch of shelves and these were the excess. And then I thought to myself, since these are washable, I can make them into uh, reusable stencils and they have a pattern on them so it's easily identifiable so uh, I'm one for not wasting material so I uh, went ahead and cut them into some shapes and I think they will be very effective um, First of all, didn't cost me anything, and they were going to be thrown out anyway. So I figure, you know, why not make use of them? And uh, reuse materials. I forgot to mention that um, in this piece, I intend to have some border on the edge. And instead of taping my paper, I, uh, I have these uh, clear plastic uh, pieces that I cut into strips. And I'm going to lay them on the plate, like as a, as a mask. Uh, sort of a, a giant stencil on the edge and this will enable me to have a very clean white border without taping the paper. Uh, I, I appreciate the suggestions of some of my viewers to to use a hair dryer on the on the tape to make it easier to remove but uh, this is a different way where I don't even need to place tape on the paper. Uh, 
instead I will mask out the edge so uh, anyways I thought I'd give that a mention and so here I have Lucas Naples yellow this would be the general the general um, background so some Naples yellow and this is caramel also by Lucas this is a little more on the brown side kind of like a raw sienna yellow ochre and then I will have a little bit of raw sienna just to give some different tones So since this is a double plate, it uh, feels like I'm doing two images at the same time. But hopefully when I pull the print, it will feel like it's just one, one piece, one unified piece. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to add some more scribbling with my stick. Hopefully these um, scribbles will register as white. So I'm going to take off this edge mask here. So I have more or less a clean border. And this is my sheet of Arnhem okay Arnhem 1618 
Now my border might be crooked, but that's okay. Um, I think what the plastic strip does is minimize the mess. And it, it gives me a place for my thumb to lift the paper without making a, a smear. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay, I will leave this for five minutes and I will be right back. I'm going to soak my brayer. Okay, let's see what we got. I like the result already. The um, scribbles have transferred very well. Now the, the seam of the two plates is very clear, but With subsequent pulls, I think it won't be so obvious. I think I have a small tear, but I'm very happy with this result. This is what I meant by the border here. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as even here on the left side, but that's okay. So as usual, I will air dry this first pool and come back for the next step. So don't go away. Okay, back from a short break, I was able to lay out my shelf liner stencils and I'm going to use ivory black here in the middle and blend it out to uh, unbleached titanium here on the edges. So I'm going to start with the ivory black and I'm going to try to work around the stencils They don't stick to the plate as well because of the texture. So I have to uh, hold them down, unfortunately. But like everything else, this is just an experiment. It may work, it may not work.
Okay, that's it for the black. And then for the edges, I will use unbleached titanium. So I'm going to switch prayers. So I think in a way the effect of this is, is going to be very painterly. It's not going to be uh, the clean hard edge effects that I usually get with the acetate stencils. These are a little rougher and it's a different look. And I'm deliberately forcing the unbleached titanium to blend into the black. Yeah, I, I'm not very keen on the, the fact that the stencil doesn't stick to the plate. It keeps lifting up. Um, but it's an experiment and I have to try. Otherwise, I won't know the result. Okay, I'm doing a little of the mixing of the unbleached titanium and the black. Okay. Now, um, I guess it won't be difficult to take these off because they they just come right off. They're not even stuck to the plate. There we go. Let me just put this in my my tub. I'm going to take these uh these border shields off. Okay. Um, so here is here is the first pool. Mm. 
Now I, I have a feeling that the result is going to be kind of a very rugged and loose image because the edges of the stencils are not clear cut. They're very rough. So it's a different look. See what we got. Well, I, as I predicted, it's a kind of a rough painterly look. very different from my usual work. Okay. Okay, this is the second pull. I just had to uh, cover the plate with some brown paper to shield the back of the print so I don't make a big mess. Um, this is a very, it's more like an oil painting. The uh, effect is very rough and there's the mark of the brayer and the um, you see the gestures and the textures produced by the brayer. So uh, it's an interesting look. It's a departure from the very clean cut um, stencil work of the other pieces. But um, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It's something different and uh, it's a different approach. It's a different interpretation of the uh, work by Ashil Gorky. So uh, again, I will air dry this and figure out a third layer. So I'll be right back. Okay, here we are at the third portion of the uh, printing session. Now I have here a pewter by Amsterdam. I'm going to assign that for the right side. I have some deep green by Artist Loft with this portion here. I have Cadmium Red by Lucas and I have Iridescent Graphite by Liquitex for the extreme left side. Now keeping in mind that in the print this will all be reversed that the graphite will be on this side and the green on this side and then the red on this side. So I will proceed to do the pewter first of all. Here. No, I've, I've never tried this color before, so it's quite exciting. 
it's almost like a, a dull silver color. Now these are my regular reusable stencils and they, as you can see they are more well behaved because they stay in place. They don't shift around or lift because they are very well stuck on the plate. So I really like using them and I'm, I'm used to them. Okay, so that's it for the pewter. And then I will have a section of, well, there's some, uh, this is a brand new tube, so it has this protective cover. Have some of the green here, not a whole lot, just a little bit. And I'm going to use a different brayer. Okay, then I have the cadmium red. I'm just going to use the same brayer with the pewter and just blend it. And then, lastly, this is the iridescent graphite, and this is a much darker, almost black. a little over over have to get rid of the uh, squishy parts there we go so now hands are clean and
It's a huge difference with these uh, reusable plastic stencils. They, they really cling to the plate. So I, uh, I like using them. The, uh, the shapes they produce are very clean and sharp. But I'm hoping that the, the clear cut shapes will contrast with the rough the rough effects of the second pole. Okay, I think I got them all. Here's one more. Oh, yet another one. Okay. Okay, to refresh your memory, here is the print with the two layers. Okay, so I'm going to try a little trick here and see if it, it will work. I want to get rid of the seam in the middle. I'm going to de deliberately misregister this. Or maybe the uh, paint will cover this white line in the middle. So I'm going to shift, deliberately shift this towards the right. So this is another experiment where I deliberately misregister to hide the seam. It may not work, but I'll give it a try. Since I already made a mistake with the uh, one edge, but it's not a mistake. I uh, strike it for experience. Because my intention is to show in real time what could go right and what could go wrong. Uh, it doesn't matter. I just want to show you the results of my various experiments. Okay, this is the exciting part. Let's see what we got. I love the texture created by the 
the brayer is very fine. I'm going to show you uh, in in uh, extreme close up. The seam is still here, but it's not as obvious. It really does look like an oil painting. Pretty cool. See, let's uh, let me give you a close up so you can see more of the detail. I have to be extra careful because this is a larger piece of paper. You see what I mean about the texture created by the brayer and the way it is interplay with the shapes and, and colors. I like that a lot. I think the, the roughness and uh, the texture gives this image a lot of raw energy. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm not going to proceed to another layer. I think this is a standalone. And uh, let me show you the image of the inspiration piece uh, superimposed on the result just for comparison's sake. Um, I, I want to make a point that it's not a copy, it's just inspired by the inspiration piece by Ashil Gorky. So anyways, I hope you like this uh, experiment. Um, please like, share with your friends, and uh, hit the subscribe button if you like this video. And uh, I hope to see you next time.